way to Orlando, guys. Hi guys, welcome to Zoe's Fancy Cakes channel. I'm Zoe and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this little creation. So I've been busy packing to go on my Disney holidays and I thought why not turn the ears into a cake. We're going to have a go at doing some marbled buttercream and then some mini and Mickey ears. Let's start. So these are my mini and Mickey ears that I bought and I'm going to design the cake around these. So I'm looking for a cookie cutter that's about the same size as those ears. So that's the largest of my circle cutters that I've got. And I'm gonna pre-make the ears before I make a start on the cake itself. So I'm gonna use some flour paste. So you can use flour paste or gum paste. You want something that's gonna set nice and hard. Now, originally I'd planned on doing these as little ginger biscuits, which I think would taste nicer because you're not really gonna wanna eat the flour paste because it sets quite hard. But I just ran out of time, guys. So it was quicker for me to just make, make them in gum paste. And that way I can do them ahead of time as well. So I'm just going to push a kebab skewer, a wooden kebab skewer into each one. I'm going to use the pointy end first to make the hole and then I'll turn it around to the pointy ends at the bottom just so it goes in the cake a little bit easier. Now I think on the headband the ears are slightly oval maybe. They're not quite round so I'm just stretching these out a bit. So I'm just going to put these on my little foam board and then what I'm going to do is put a stitching line in around the outer edge just using this little stitching tool like so. Do that on both ears. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these little hearts. I was going to stick them on in like a grey fondant or grey modelling paste, but I don't have a heart cut to the same shape as these particular hearts, so I thought it'd be easier to just paint them on. So I'm just using a silver edible powder that's mixed with some dipping solution, or you can just mix it with clear alcohol. You can mix it with water, but it just ends up a little bit clumpy. It doesn't give you a nice smooth paint. So we're just going to paint those hearts over those two ears. They can go to the side now to dry. Let's work on a miniature bow. So I want a little rectangle. I'm going to fold it in half and then we're going to kind of push it together in the middle to make Minnie's little bow that's going to go on our ear. A little strip for around the middle and there's a cute little bow. I'm going to try and keep it a similar size to the ears that I've actually got. And we're going to do a similar thing on a bigger bow, but this time I'm not going to fold it. So we're going to take a rectangle and we're just kind of pleating it in the middle rather than folding the two ends over. Hopefully that makes sense. And I'm going to trim it down either side. And then we're just going to wrap a little rectangle around the middle for the center of the bow as well. And it has got these little white kind of rope bits on. I'm going to use my clay extruder for this. Just using a little round nozzle. And then it's just some more of that white flower paste that I'm just pushing through it. Now, the bow does have this on top and bottom. I'm only going to put it on the top just because I think I might break it on the bottom when I'm pushing it into the cake. So I'm sticking it on with just a little bit of edible glue. And you're going to try and create little loops or sort of arches with it. Just take it up to the middle bit and then start from the other side of the middle bit again. Going across to the other end of the bow. Now... I used some greaseproof paper or baking paper guys to just kind of trace over the size and shape of the Mickey and Minnie faces. So I've only traced around one and then I'm putting it down to some black flour paste or modeling paste. You can use modeling paste as well. You can use fondant guys, but you'll probably need to add some CMC or Tylos to it. So I don't know if you can see that. I've just pushed through with my Dresden tool just to create an outline. And then we're going to just cut all the way around that mark that you've done. Like so. Just round off any edges if you get any untidy edges. I'm going to flip it the other way for the mini one. And we're just going to repeat the same thing again. So I'm just pressing down with my dressing tool just to make a bit of a mark. I'm also marking around sort of the edge of where the white will be. So for the white bit, I've rolled some flour paste really thin. Sort of as thin as I can get it. Because then you can see when I press it over the face, you can see where that mark is that I've made. Now I'm going to stick it down with some water or edible glue, but just make sure you don't put that water or edible glue beyond where the white is supposed to go. So just press it carefully around the edge of the face and then we're going to cut where you can just see the indentation of that line, like so. I'm going to go back to my piece of greaseproof paper and just check whereabouts the facial features want to go. So I'm just pressing down with the pointy end of my Dresden tool and you see when I press down it shows you the black underneath which I think works well on this one. I'm going to take a tiny bit of that red 
and we're going to squeeze that down so we get a red dot on the cheek and then we just want a little oval of black paste for the nose and we're pretty much repeating the same thing for Minnie as well so she's the same as Mickey the difference is that little bow that we made earlier is going to go on her ear and then she also has some additional little eyelashes too let's just draw those under the eye careful they don't join up to the mouth and then again she just wants her nose adding so I'm just going to put these to one side to let them dry. I'm going to leave all these pieces overnight as well, guys. But the bow, you can't see it very well on my actual ears, but it has a heart in the middle. So I'm going to create that now. And I'm going to use black, red, and white. So let's start with my black heart. These are my PME hearts that I've got. I'm using the same heart, but I'm turning it round so it's upside down just to create the outline. So I haven't cut through this one. It's just created a wider outline for me. What I'll do is I'll put links below the video, guys, to everything that I do use. So let's stick the black heart inside the white one. Then we're going to need a red one as well. Let's go for a slightly smaller heart now. We're just going to stick that in the middle. Now I'm going to colour the very edge with my edible black pen. If it's a bit soft to do this, wait while your heart has dried a little bit longer and then you can colour in the edge a bit easier. So... The following day is when I work on my cake. So I'm just going to stack up a few layers of chocolate cake. I'm just using some plain buttercream in between each layer. It's up to you how tall you'd like to go with this one. And I'm using six inch cakes. I don't want to put the filling too thick, otherwise it will start to bulge out a little bit as they go taller. We're going to give it a light coating of buttercream all the way around the edges for our crumb coat doesn't need to be on thickly at this point, just a nice thin layer is fine. So to create the marbled effect in the buttercream, I'm going to use some grey colour mill. So the colour mill is quite a good food colour for buttercream because it's an oil based colour. I'll put links to it below. Um, I do sell this in my online shop, guys. Don't put too much in and don't mix it very well. Just give it a couple of mixes, not many because we need to have it looking marbled. If we mix it more than three or four times, it's just gonna color it solid gray. Put your crumb coated cake in the fridge so that that will harden a little bit. Then that buttercream that we've just tried to create the marbled effect with, you're gonna put onto your cake. Now put it on really thickly. I'm trying not to smooth it about too much. So I'm almost kind of dolloping it on. And you can even put some just of the plain buttercream that hasn't got any color in between as well. Cause you'll see the more I smooth it around, the more it smears it together and you lose that marbled effect. So I don't wanna move it around too much. And I've seen loads of different videos with different ways of doing the marbled effect. And a lot of people put the buttercream onto an acetate sheet and then press it against the cake. Um, my plan was to scrape it at this point, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some acetate. My acetate is a bit big, but it's fine, guys. And I'm going to press it down onto my cake. I'm going to try and squeeze it with a smoother. And hopefully you should start to see the marbled effect a little bit more as I start to press it down. I think you can see it coming through a little bit already. So it looks very different to what it did a minute ago when I just palette knifed it on there. Now my acetate isn't quite long enough to go around, so I've got two pieces. So I'm just going to join them together on there. Maybe in another video, if you guys want to see me do more marble buttercream, I'll try doing it the other way around where you put it on the acetate and then place it on the cake. So slightly different to what I've done here. So I'm just going to keep squeezing it. I actually quite like this effect, so it's kind of left holes, indentations. Can you see in the buttercream there? But you can definitely see the marbling a bit better than what you could a little bit ago, especially in, in some areas. But yeah, those little holes and things, I think they work quite well. I'm going to leave them on there. So just smooth it down a little bit more. And then I'm going to put this in the fridge to let it harden. So once it's hardened, I've left mine in for a couple of hours. Guys, you might not need to leave it in that long, but I've left mine in a while. You should be able to peel off the acetate. Just be careful with it. You don't want to pull your buttercream back off. And then I'm just going to carefully run my smoother along the edge just a little bit, just to smooth off the buttercream just a tiny bit. Now, I don't want to do it too much because I don't want to smear it around. Then once you've done that, you can insert those ears that we made earlier. So do those at least the day before, guys, so that they're nice and firm. You can press them in fairly easily. I'm going to place my bow up here. So I'm just going to press it in slightly. Don't press too hard. You don't want to break any of the pieces. 
and the heart there now these have stuck in just by pushing them into the buttercream but if you find they don't stick you might want to add a square of buttercream just to the back of them and then i'm just going to put a tiny bit of a chocolate drip on i'm putting a little bit around the back and then i'll put some on the front I'm trying it at the back first really just to see what i think it looks like so i'm not going to put the chocolate drip everywhere at the front let's just put a bit here on this side again i'll put links to what i've used below the videos guys and then i'm going to put a tiny bit on the back of the mini and mickey faces now I was going to put them up on the bow, just like it is on the ears, but actually, because they cover up so much of the ears in the bow, you couldn't really see the bow, so we've stuck those to the bottom instead. And then I'm just adding a little bit of chocolate drip just to one of the ears, like that. A big thank you to those of you guys who have subscribed to my videos and to those of you that watch them regularly. Don't forget to click the little bell icon under the video to get notifications of each time I bring out a new tutorial. So this isn't the first time I've had a go at Minnie and Mickey ears. A while ago, in fact, last time I was in Florida, actually, I had a go at some Isomalt Minnie and Mickey ears. And what I'll do is I'll put a link in the corner of the video for you to click to have a look at that one. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Keep your eyes peeled for more Disney-themed ones while I'm away on holiday. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.